This racing driver found 2 seconds per lap in our first coaching session. I broke down his driving according to 2 secrets that no one talks about. Matthew is an intermediate driver and just started in iRacing and his mistakes are very common and you could be doing the same thing. So if you want to improve your driving, beginner or advanced, watch this video until the end. Now what can we analyze in Matthew's onboard video? How can a coach identify things to help a driver find 2 seconds so quickly? Well, my coaching session always works the same way and I've been doing this for over 2000 hours so trust me it works. I watch the driver for a few laps and I try to pay attention to two things, what he's doing with the car and what he's doing with the line. For example, thinking about car handling, what do you think he could do better in this corner? Or this corner? Now thinking about racing lines, what do you think he could have done better here? Or here. It took me just two laps to quickly realize what he needed to improve, so I immediately stopped him so we could work on it. Let's see what I had to tell him. We have two things to talk about. Yep. And I think they're gonna be pretty spot on on what you need to work in absolutely all corners of this track. I mean, I know I'm still three seconds off the pros, but I'm glad I at least went a little bit faster than my best. No, but we here. found something that's really gonna help you. It's basically two words, two topics. The first is hesitation. The second one is checkpoints. And this checkpoint idea, I just came up with it. If the explanation works and helps you very well, I'm gonna write a chapter about it on the book. Especially in Virginia, there are some very, very specific places that you have to be there in order to go fast, especially when there are like connecting corners. Right. I'm going to get an example here. We have these two corners. The first one is kind of a kink. We hit the apex here. And then the second one, you have to slow down a lot more. This is the yeah. actual corner. Actually, if you see, there's a lot, a lot of repavement and lots of like tire marks and stuff. And if you go here, you don't have that much. So that means most cars are really on the limit right here, but we're really not on the limit right here. This is not even a corner for some car. Given that we have a corner that is not a corner and an actual corner that is indeed a corner, <laughs> we need to maximize the line on this one. The entry on this one is going to be much more important than the line of the corner before, because this is where we need to break. We need to maximize the grip to, to find lap times. What you are doing here is you're taking the apex of this not corner. And then as soon as you start doing the next corner, we have have some states here. We have the positioning, remember positioning, and we have the angle. So the positioning of this corner here, if we were to completely ignore whatever comes be before, what would be the perfect place to be? Well, I, I think I need to be all the way out on the green and yellow. Okay, green and yellow. And yeah. where would be the ideal angle? Like at least parallel uh, to it, right? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Because you don't like want to be pointing to the outside. Line. Exactly, because yeah, if you point no. to yeah. the outside, <laughs> that's extra degrees that you have to do for that corner. So if this corner is say yeah. 80 degrees and you're pointing outside, then your corner is actually nine because yeah. you're pointing 10 out. This is where you are. I don't even get to the dark paper. So you're pointing outwards a lot and you're yeah. not using all the track here. This is the corner that matters. This does not matter. So how can we then solve this problem? Well, I'm assuming that I forget the apex there and kind of stay mid pack so that I slide out. To exactly. The outside. You want to ignore this because you don't need to use this apex. And they, they put a right. curb here because they're just like trolling you because <laughs> you really don't need to do that. You're your eye, your mind's eye should be right there on the on that curve because that's right. the important place to be. And we're going to call that a checkpoint. Okay. You figure out like the initial conditions of a corner are ultra important when the corner requires that you be on the limit. So right. here we're going to ignore that because we have a checkpoint now. And the checkpoint is bringing the car as much as possible to the right here. And to that to do that, we're going to have to ignore this apex. So it's this apex is a trap. So okay. there's no checkpoints here. Checkpoint is right here. This is the first checkpoint, right? So. So, mm -hmm. boom, there's actually a chapter on, uh, on my book where I, I use exactly this corner talking about that. Just by placing your car, say a full car to the right, that's like three tenths you can find here. Okay. Okay. And then, all right, here we have this exit. And after this exit, we have this corner here, which is kind of tricky. And it's it's a very important corner. Mm -hmm. You do it pretty much on power. So there's no braking involved, but you need to use all the track to be able to do it flat. So what you're doing here is you're actually lifting a lot to be able to 
to not lift that much, what do you want to do? You want to open up more. So this corner has a checkpoint right here. It's like right here on top of this curb. If you can place your car here, then you're able to really like carry so much more speed because this is a lot of track here that you're not using. So there's another checkpoint here. And I call it a checkpoint specifically because there's a corner before and you just have this context that distracts you from using the track. Because if you had, again, if you had a, a, a long straight before, then you would have the, the mental time to think about maximizing this corner entry. But because we're yeah. thinking so much about exiting the corner before, we end up losing that. And that's why I want to call this a checkpoint. It's a very important place to not forget about is to, as soon as you get out of this corner here, you allow the car to go all the way to the outside. Uh, the checkpoint in this case is going to be the turn in point of this one. You're going to just bring the car as much as possible. Again, positioning and angle all the okay. way to the outside. So this is the second checkpoint that I wanted to talk about. And then here we have a right hander that leads into a different corner. So we have boom. And then what is the checkpoint here on this important corner? Um, For me, I, I want to be all the way off to the right. Exactly. And stay parallel. Yeah. But so, I, like I'm so far over and I, I didn't mean to be there, but I, I know exactly. So but that's the thing that I don't know how to get over safe. I guess. Exactly. Like that's the thing. When you do this corner, your mind's eye is already looking at, the apex. at that white line on the right. Yeah. So that's the checkpoint. You're doing a corner before, but you're already planning. You're already thinking about a place where you should be because that corner, their left hander is going to be a lot more important than this right. one. So in this case here, for example, what I would probably do is stay a little bit more to the left uh, here, turn in a tiny bit late and late apex this one. So then by the exit here, you're more to the right. And that's your checkpoint right here. So you see what, what your line is doing here, because this is an easy flat corner, right? This one. Uh, you're turning in a little bit too early, I think. You hit the curb too early. We want to we wanna ignore this curb. We want to actually use the end of it, like this tiny grass here. Right. We want to use this, because then we're going to turn in later and also kind of ignore this, this curb. This curb does not exist. You want to actually use the kind of the grass, the end of it, ultra late apex, and then you're going to find yourself on the checkpoint, which is the place where just by being there, that corner is going to be three times quicker. It makes so much sense. Like all this, the other adjustments, they have to serve to the checkpoint. They have to serve to like have to put the car right there. See, this is probably like you can be 15 kilometers per hour quicker if you use all that. Same right there, here, all the way to the left. yes, this is the checkpoint because this is the most important exit possible due to like infinite straight, straight after. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. what you want really is to do this entry, this entry here, your mind's eye is already right here because yeah. that's where you're going to prepare the, the exit. So here, boom, you can move this much. So Which it's just a matter of planning. Like you have to plan in advance in your mind. I want to put my car in that place. So I'm going to do this corner. This line is going to be a function of that checkpoint. Gotcha. So in this case, how can we go more to the left? Well, we can carry more speed. Just carry more just speed. I going to say, does that mean I can carry more speed? <laughs> you can carry more speed on the entry because just by carrying more speed, there's you're not going to have any choice. The line and the speed itself are going to take you to your checkpoint. So it's a win-win scenario in this corner. You carry more speed, you're going to be forced to be on your checkpoint and you're going to have a better exit. So it's a win on entry, win on exit. So here's a checkpoint. You want to be all, all the way to the white line. This one, you're, yeah. you're, you're doing it right because you can see that you're bringing the car to the left and then to the right. So you're placing your car in a good place. You can, of course, be a little bit Maybe more to the... a little more over. Exactly. But that's fine. And there's a very important one here. We have a left-hander. You see that mostly checkpoints happen, not mostly, almost like always, checkpoints happen when there's more than one corner because that's the environment that confuses you. Right. So checkpoints are places where you have to actively think and plan to go there because the cornering environments, the compound corners are going to try to distract you into doing the wrong line. And that's why you need the checkpoints, like an active place to think about. In this case, it's here. It's a change of direction because this right-hander is going to be ultra important because again, there's a long straight after. So you need to nail this corner. And again, let's try to erase all the context. What is the best place to be on this one? The white line, right? Let's yeah. see where you put your car. <laughs> you see? I'm nowhere near it. <laughs> exactly, because you're thinking about this corner and you're exiting yeah. this corner. You're, you're thinking about this. But this is not this, this is not the most important corner. That one is because it's a tighter corner that leads to a long straight. So what you want to do is think about this corner. Apex later, you're turning in way too early. You're hitting the beginning yeah. of this curb. Let's say aim to the end of it, even the grass. And then you're going to find yourself like a full car length or two to the left. And then this corner, you're going to have to change direction a little bit earlier. Uh, and then you're going to benefit a lot from this. So these are the checkpoints. Will you remember them? Yes. I'm also recording this so I can watch oh, yeah, it Yeah, true. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is 
is the hesitation that I mentioned. I think you need to chase oversteer on entry. Tiny bit okay. more, tiny bit more. You're you're waiting. You're 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 waiting. You're waiting. <laughs> that's that's the way. Like I'm I'm pretty passive. You have to be. Come on, turn, 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 turn. Because turning is going fast. If you turn more, you're going faster. Motorsports is all about turning. It's about brake and rotation. Exits. It's just like freaking pressing the throttle. Like there's there's no scale in pressing the throttle. It's about braking and getting the car to point. Because if it points earlier, you can get back on power earlier. Try to force a little bit more rotation. And if that means being stuck on the inside, because the car is giving you more rotation than you want, that just means you can carry more speed. So carry 1% more speed if you feel that the car is rotating more than necessary. But first, you want to get that rotation. The rotation comes before we gain speed. A lot of people try to go faster and then see what happens and try to stay alive. No, the safest approach is to get a little bit more rotation, force more rotation to see, oh wow, the car can turn, wow. And then with that information, you safely in increase the speed you're gonna take that corner. So rotation first, just go be a little bit less hesitant, more more active with rotation. And again, it's it's not a big change. It's a subtle, subtle, just a little bit more, you know, a little bit more rotation, um, progressively getting more until you find that the car is either understeering or oversteering a little bit. Ideally, you want to be on the verge of oversteering. And I didn't see that. I didn't see your car wanting to lose it because you were never asking for the limit of rotation. You were always asking for 99%. Right. So we just need that that spice. Car. When you say that, is it literally rotating my wheel more to see how far I can rotate it and then adjusting speed to that? like to see how much further I can push it? Is that what Steering you're referring to? Steering is one of the tools, uh, but it can also be a little bit more trail braking. It can also be a little bit more engine braking. So we always okay. have all these three tools, like so it's like trial and error. Yep. In your case, I think we can start with steering. Be careful not to turn too much and start getting into like crazy understeer though. So it, it, it's- Yeah, I don't want to burn up my yeah, tires. Yeah, right? it's like rotating. It's rotating more. That can be a combination of those three uh, tools for rotating. Okay, so okay. Let's try that. For now, let's do a rerun on the checkpoints where you want to be. Because the, the biggest challenge on these is that you're going to have to think ahead. Yep. You're going to have to like think ahead at least one corner ahead in all these places. This is forget the apex that I want to make sure that I'm out here, but also parallel to get in and get as a As parallel exit. as possible. Some, I, yeah. I don't think it's going to be like fully parallel because you don't have the, the, the space to do it. This is checkpoint two, making sure that I get all the way out here so that I get, oh, I can go even further there. Tiny bit, yeah. And the other checkpoint right here, getting on this line more so that I get uh, the better turn in to stay here. Yeah. Same with this, getting further over, checking my break point so that I'm, oh God, yeah, that's that's hard to get to. Yeah, exactly, because you're not used to no. the car that, that white. All right, next checkpoint is at the end of this straight, which I still got to figure out what the actual break point is here, but staying to the left, getting my downshift for this exit. I'm here going for a later apex to get that turn in and get a better drive off. And the data already went green on this one, you see? You're not even forcing. Don't fall on the apex trap. Ah. Uh, oh, here, there's a question for you. When you lose the car like that, not that it's always savable, how do you say, try and save a car when you get sideways? Because in, in oval cars and NASCAR, I can figure it out. I can keep a car going. I can get completely sideways and straighten it out. No problem with using braking gas. I cannot do the same thing in these cars. Generally, these cars, because of the ABS, it's impossible to actually save after you go after the okay. point of no return. Well, uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's a very important thing that's probably going to happen in all of these checkpoints. There's a common thing in all of these checkpoints. You're actually going wider, right? Because we're, we're, we're preparing the next corner with more focus and we're, we're going wider before all of these corners. So all of these checkpoints, they basically mean opening up more before the actual corner. And because we open up more, you have to turn in earlier. Because right. if you if you open up, but you turn in in the same place, it's always going to be late because a gotcha. bigger arc starts earlier. So that's the reason it's fun because you, you probably use the same turning point well this is definitely going to take some practice to get out of my older ways yeah it's a this is a 50 lap thing jeez that's really out there be careful not to artificially go there after you are ready to yeah too much on the inside i can definitely see the benefits of what you showed me there and how it's going to make me faster ah 
<laughs> okay, All so right, it's gonna take a lot of practice. <laughs> what happened there? You were on the right line, but when you started turning in, you turned in a little bit too gently, as if you were braking. In that situation, remember the MRP placements lesson when I say that if you're on power, the MRP is at the turning point. Right. So that's that's already the MRP because you're you're on power, right? So you already turn in quite fast to get a, a, a good rotation on entry. Because if you if you hesitate on the rotation on entry there and you don't get it, you're gonna need that rotation right. at the end and you try to force that rotation at the second half of the corner and the car didn't have it because it was already too fast so remember right. that the, the, the higher the speed the less the car can handle the rotation so in that case the turning point for that right hander is early and fast try that there you go you see yeah. Just by being a little bit more aggressive on the on the turning point, you get the rotation that the car can handle at the, at that speed, and then later in the corner, you're good. Nice. That's it, man. That's it. Stay off the grass. That's it. Perfect. A little wide there. That the, uh, that, that was good. You nailed all three checkpoints so far that we talked about. And that's freaking purple. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's cool tires. My outlap. <laughs> nice. Hesitating a lot less. Maybe Apex. Ah, too early. <laughs> What's funny now is though, is I recognized it right away and I knew before I got there that I was gonna miss it. Exactly. And that's the awareness that we need. That's perfect. You got it, man. Do a hundred laps thinking about these things. When you get more used to the checkpoints, you're gonna have some extra brain room for the hesitation thing to get the car yeah. to rotate a little bit more. Ah, okay, dang, yeah. I did it. Uh... <laughs> I knew it. I was pushing. <laughs> no, but that's it. That's it. You should spin 15 times on that corner until you really nail it. And then after you got used to it. I will practice and practice. I appreciate it. I'll, I'm definitely going to book a couple more of these just to keep going and learn more. But I think like that checkpoint thing, I, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be good because now I can actually go through each track beforehand and figure out what the checkpoints are before I even drive the chat track, which is great. That's amazing. Add that to the to the program. I think that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will definitely write down something about it yeah i have a gift for you for staying until the end use the coupon youtube 20 to get the best online course in the planet about racing technique the motor racing checklist you can have access to 60 lessons incredibly advanced and detailed lessons that will make you a much better racing driver you have absolutely no idea if you have any questions, send me a message on Discord and I can talk about all that. And by the way, there's a lot of racing technique content on my channel, so make sure you watch this video.